lighting is essential for healthy plant growth, and it's crucial to make sure that you're getting the right light for your plant to tank. Whether you're looking to buy a new light or you're looking for an upgrade, this video will go through everything you need to know to make the best choice for a new light. There's a kit.co link in the description that goes over my lighting recommendations. The Tropiscape Discord server is also up and running. Come join us and talk everything about aquariums. Obviously, the first thing you need to know is the length of the light. This is pretty straightforward, but there is one thing to look out for. Majority of LED light models are advertised in a certain length range. If you have an 18 inch wide tank, you would think to get the 12 to 18 inch model and save some money. But this is the wrong choice. The smallest number is the length of the light itself, while the other number is how far the extendable brackets can go. You want the light to span across the entire length of the tank. This eliminates any dead zones and provides an even amount of light from corner to corner. Corner. So, for an 18 inch long tank, you want the smallest number to be at or close to 18 inches, but not longer than 18. I hope that made sense. The next thing to look out for is the composition of the LEDs. By that, I mean the combination of RGB LEDs in the model. Some lights only offer white plus blue LEDs, while others come with the red, green, blue, and sometimes including white. The main difference between the two is that RGB can never offer that true white lighting. Now, does this really matter for plant growth? Kind of. I'll get into that in later sections, but for now, all you need to know is that the composition of the LEDs have an overall effect on how your tank looks. When it comes to the build material of a light, its material won't affect the quality of the LEDs or its performance. What really comes into play is longevity. Oh, Albeit that LEDs will last a very long time, a metal construction is slightly better in the long run as it's a better heat sink and prevents overheating, if there even is a risk for that, as LEDs don't get too, too hot to the point that they will just burst into fire. Or unless Unless you're in a hot environment. As you're shopping through lights, you might often see them advertised as a 65k rating or something similar. This number refers to the color temperature of the light, and it's not about how hot the light gets. Color temperature is a parameter that describes the overall appearance of white light and is measured in kelvins. For example, the difference between soft light and daylight light bulbs is a matter of color temperature. If you prefer the appearance of soft white, choose a lower kelvin rating, or opt for a higher one if you like the daylight look. Color temperature doesn't significantly affect plant growth. The key factor you need to look out for plant and health growth is light spectrum. Light spectrum refers to the visible spectrum of light emitted by a light source and is vital for plant health and photosynthesis. In the context of plant growth, blue light promotes vegetative growth and strong healthy leaves, while red light is essential for flowering and fruiting. Except common aquarium plants don't produce fruit, unless you're redwood floaters, of course. So in our case, red light also helps with the enhancement of red pigments and red plants. So if you want Want to grow red plants or make them more red, choosing a light that contains more red in the spectrum is ideal. Take a shot every time I said red there. Now the same idea also goes for green plants, as green light is often less absorbed by plants and is more reflective. However, green light has a significant golden photosynthesis, especially in deeper layers of plant cells. Spectrum is something to keep in mind when shopping as every model is different from one another. For example, these two lights have the exact same color temperature but completely different light spectrums. Now don't get me wrong, both of these lights can grow plants extremely extremely well, but red plants might not be as vibrant with the Fluval Plant 3.0 unless you can boost its red lighting. Although a balanced spectrum of RGB is more often beneficial for overall plant growth and health, water can also absorb wavelengths, thus affecting how deep the light penetrates and which parts of the spectrum are more effective at various depths. Uh, that was quite a sentence, so think of it this way. Think of light in an aquarium as sunlight filtering through a dense forest. The thicker the canopy, the more certain colors of light are filtered out, thus allowing only specific wavelengths to reach the forest floor, which brings us to the next topic. PAR VALUES PAR measures the strength of light that plants can use for photosynthesis in a given area. PAR is a way better indicator of how good a light is than the generic watts per gallon rule for a planted tank. This graphic made by 2HR Aquarius goes over the strength of household light bulbs. All of these lights vary when it comes to watts and lumens, but are similar in terms of PAR. These lights will definitely be bright to us, but they won't be enough to bring out richer tones and colors of plants, as explained in the tidbit at the bottom. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, there's no easy way to measure PAR. You cannot convert watts, lumens, or even lux to PAR. The only way to know is to purchase very expensive equipment, trust the data from the manufacturer, or find the data elsewhere, such as this website. 
Now you may have seen this graph shown when shopping for lights. This is called the absorption spectrum, which shows the absorption rates of photosynthesis for both chlorophyll A and B. However, these graphs can sometimes be misleading. It often shows that green light plays a minimal role in photosynthesis, but this isn't entirely accurate. In reality, green light still contributes to photosynthesis, especially in deeper layers of plant cells as I mentioned before. It's important not to rely solely on these graphs. They can be oversimplified and sometimes used more for marketing rather than providing practical guidance. The overall light spectrum graph is a more crucial factor to consider. When it comes to choosing aquarium lights, quality of life features can significantly influence decision. Features like Bluetooth connectivity, built-in timers, adjustable intensity, RGB control, and various lighting modes like sunrise and sunset. These add considerable value to a simple LED light. However, there are a few things to look out for. Built-in timers are essential. They should be a standard feature on every aquarium light to prevent overwhelming or underwhelming light exposure, which can promote algae growth. But be aware that not all built-in timers offer the same level of control. Some may only allow you to set a fixed duration, limiting your ability to fine-tune the lighting to your tank's needs. Even if you have complete freedom, the UX experience may be very confusing, making it almost impossible to use. But moreover, some of the features are kind of useless. I'm looking at you lighting modes. Honestly, I've never touched modes such as moonlight or even thunderstorm, no matter how cool it looks. Now, let's talk about features you should look out for. As I've mentioned before, a reliable built-in timer is non-negotiable. Well, to some extent. It not only helps in maintaining a consistent light cycle, but also saves you the cost of buying an additional timer outlet. Control over light intensity is another must-have. While you can adjust intensity by physically altering the light position, it's much more convenient to have this feature built into the light itself. It allows for more precise adjustments, helping you achieve that elusive balanced tank. The best quality of life feature, in my opinion, is Bluetooth or wireless app control. This feature encompasses virtually all the benefits we've discussed, intensity adjustment, duration control, and even individual RGB slash WRGB customization. The downside, price. Lights with Bluetooth app control are often more expensive, but if it fits within your budget, it's an investment worth considering. Beyond these, other features might be nice to have, but can Consider them as an additional perk rather than essentials. Obviously, the cheaper you go, the fewer features and lower build quality you can expect. However, not everyone needs all those added quality of life features. The key is to find something that fits within your budget while meeting your current needs. But there's another important factor to consider. Future proofing. This concept is about thinking ahead and planning for your future needs, not just what you need right now. For instance, are you planning to grow more red plants or more demanding species in the future? Do you see yourself upgrading to a high-tech setup? These are crucial questions to ask. It's similar to how you might future-proof your computer by buying an RTX 4090 despite only playing solitaire on a 1080p monitor. You want to play 4K solitaire. When it comes to choosing a manufacturer for your aquarium lights, there are options to suit every budget. If you're looking for more affordable yet reliable lights, brands like Hyger, Nikru, Glorium, and Seora are great choices. These manufacturers are known for offering cost-effective solutions without compromising too much on quality. On the other hand, if you're in the market for a higher-end light, brands like Twinstar, ADA, ONF, Chihiros, and Fluval, just to name a few, are at the top of the game. They're renowned for their superior quality and advanced features. It's worth noting that while these brands are generally considered a high-end brand, they offer some budget-friendly options that don't skimp on quality. However, my approach to selecting an aquarium light focuses more on the features and the price of the individual light model rather than the manufacturer's brand. Each brand has its own strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes you might find a light that meets your specific needs at a better price point regardless of the manufacturer. So while brand reputation can be a helpful guide, I recommend looking closely at the features each light offers and how it fits well into your budget and aquarium setup. At the end of the day, light is a crucial factor in every planted aquarium. It's important to make sure that the light you go with will fit with your current setup. However, even if you have the best or cheapest light you can buy, if you have no idea how to synergize it with both CO2 and nutrients, you will have a bad time. You can find more about that in this video.